read with me from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. My message today is entitled, Behold the Lord of Glory Among You. Verse 2, now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining, exceeding white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, because he didn't know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. And a cloud came and overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly when they had looked around, they saw no one anymore, but only Jesus with themselves. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the understanding that you give us, Lord. And I pray that every single heart, every single one, that their hearts would open more fully to this message today. And that message is, behold, the Lord of glory. What a special experience, just... As a kind of a side note, what a special experience this was. What a special moment for these three men. They saw, they had seen so many things. They had seen so much. But yet there's more. There was more for these men. And I thought to myself as I'm thinking about Peter, James, and John, the staggering names, the apostles of God, and yet... Their almost um, uh, the uneasiness with what they were seeing. But what was it all about? What did it mean? Why was this necessary? And uh, why would Jesus want these men to see what they saw? And uh, what was the expectation? of their response that, that the Lord wanted. See, they were familiar with his humanity. They were familiar with his miracles, their healing, his healings. They saw many of these things. But they weren't quite aware of his deity, his glory, the, the eternal Son of God. And, and that's the way it is for some of us. The word glory, the word glory here. It literally means his eternal and ceaseless magnificence. And that's, that's words, that's our words, uh, and they don't fully describe all that he is even now uh, and all that we will see of him uh, one day and that we can see even now. But it means his brilliance and his endless wonder and beauty. And so... These men, they were familiar with his humanity. They were familiar with the dust on his feet, his sandals. They were familiar with, you know, the sweat on his brow. They were familiar with his words, his friendship, his, his quietness, his, his power, his preaching, and the things that he spoke of, and, and, and eternity that, that just resounded through his words and they were perplexed at times, and they were, they were overjoyed at times, and other times they were uh, tremendously confused or afraid. And so these men that the Lord specifically chose, 
And he chooses people today as well. These men uh, and others in their time were able to physically see Jesus and touch him and, and hear him. And this was greatly needed. This is greatly needed today. People need to hear. They need to see Jesus. How many understand that we are the body of Christ now? And it's hard for us and our humanity to understand all of that. But I want to make it rather simple today. And so among so many powerful and transformational things that happened on this mountain that we call the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus was transfigured before them, and these life-transforming truths, um, I, I, I want you to, for a moment, just hold on because I have three points I want to give to you in order to make this applicable to each of us. And so just open your heart a little wider because God wants to fill you with some good things today. So allow me to lift your eyes. Allow me to endeavor to lift your eyes from the mundane to the magnificent. See, many times Jesus would declare these words. He would declare them and they're written in the word for us to read. He who has, a, he who has eyes to see, let him see. Amen. He or she who has ears to hear, let them hear. Amen. So look around you. I think everybody has eyes. I think everybody has ears. And so it's all inclusive. But there is a point, there is a switch, there is a moment that things change in us. That we see the eternal and not just the temporal. We see the magnificent and not just the mundane. And this is what the Lord wants for all of us, I believe. In fact, I know. See, on this occasion and in what we call, as I said, the Mount of Transfiguration, these men were blessed, incredibly blessed, beyond all men at the time, to physically behold what they saw, the eternal, immortal, infinite glory of God the Father's Son. Amen. And there was Moses there, and there's Elijah there, and they, these men knew that they were Moses and Elijah without explanation. But Moses and Elijah were not brilliantly lit, if you will, shining in, in glory. And what am I saying? I, I'm lifting your eyes. I want to lift your eyes today to permanently behold the Lord of glory. You say, Pastor Randy, this is awfully deep. And this is, this, is, this is something I've not heard before, perhaps. If you've been around here any, any while, you probably have heard portions of this. But this is a, a brand new, refreshing thing God's given me for you today. See, it wasn't until... A glory cloud of all things, a cloud of the presence, the manifest presence, the glory cloud of God. We see it appearing all throughout the Bible, and it's the manifest glory presence of God, and it comes in a mist, a cloud, unexplainable, divine. And it wasn't until this cloud appeared that, that the questions that Peter had about this, this temple, this tabernacle for this one, this one, this, and all of his confusion. And we give, we give Peter grace, right? Because we don't quite understand everything the way we need to. And so we give him grace. But it wasn't until this glory cloud appeared and this voice, and they knew the voice. They knew what the voice and who the voice was. And it, it shocked them, if you will, they were trembling, and, and this voice said those simple words that we've read many times. 
this is my beloved son. Hear him. And when they lifted their eyes, Moses was gone and Elijah was gone. The cloud was gone. And the only one before them was Jesus. And I'm not sure if, the, if his garments were still bright and shining. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. They saw something that day that I believe changed their entire perspective. It changed their entire life. And the Lord is in the process of transforming our lives every single day. But this was a special day. And there are special days when you see things that you were not expecting or, or you experience things that, that the Lord had special for you. And those are moments where you lift your eyes. And that's where the Lord wants you to gaze today. The Father gave them this experience Jesus led them up the mountain. I don't know how long it took them to get there and the, the strength it took and the energy it took. It takes energy to be with Jesus intentionally. Let me just tell you that. It really does. And I'm going to explain those three things here in a moment. Behold the Lord of glory. So like them today, you to me and you, we are called upon to, to behold him. And this may seem like a simple act, but it, and it is for those of us who have really trained ourselves and intentionally moved in that direction consistently and faithfully. That's called being a faithful one, a faithful disciple. We're not always there, but, but we try, Right. But let me ask you, let me ask you some questions. Does he, has he shifted your attention? Has he silenced your voice for a moment just as the glory was coming in even to this place, even into here among us? Because we know his promise is this. His promise is that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so, so the question is, uh, has that promise come alive in you today? Are your spiritual, spiritual eyes, and the Bible tells us that we have spiritual eyes, just not physical, but we have spiritual eyes, we have spiritual ears, just not physical. Have we suddenly seen and heard him at any moment, have we intentionally lifted our eyes and opened our ears to hear and to experience the Father saying, this is my beloved Son among you, among you. See, that's what the church is all about. I know there's many churches, and they're doing a lot of different things. And, and in some ways, if it's the right heart, it's all good. But what about you? What about me? What about us? What about our focus? And so as much as they needed this life-transforming experience, Peter, James, and John, you and I must ask for it as well. And that's what the Lord is wanting to impart to you. He has led these men. He led them up the mountain. And he has led you up to the mountain today. Did you know you've been led up the mountain today? You had to battle, you had to battle just getting out of bed. It's Sunday, I want to sleep. You had to come out from among the sheets and be separate, <laughs> saith the Lord. You had to get yourself up and get yourself ready and, and get in your car and ladies, you look wonderful. Put on your makeup and look pretty and just, I'm going to be with Jesus. I am coming up the mountain to meet with my Savior. Now, these three men must have felt special, and I want you to feel special because that is your experience. That is who you are. You are called. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Oh, somebody's giving praise. The child shall lead them. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? 
Well, let me ask you this. You say, Pastor Randy, I can't see. I can't see him like that. It's hard. It's this, it's that. Nevertheless, he is here. And when you step into that place, I believe that promise that he is among us. Now, Lord, open my eyes. Now, Lord, let me hear. Now, Lord, let me see. God, let me humble my heart. See, this is how I want you to experience God as your pastor. This is my heart for you. So what am I saying? What am I describing? And what am I asking? Behold, behold the Lord of glory among you. Now, he will share his glory with no man, right? We hear that. And this is what that means. Remember, Peter said, oh, it's good for us to build three tabernacles. It sounded like a really good idea. You know, there's Moses, there's Elijah. We don't want to embarrass them. We want to include them, you know, all of this stuff. And, and then Jesus, we're going to build three tabernacles. And, and no, Jesus will share his glory with no man, but he will freely give his glory to his servants and his, pres his presence among us. Rabbi, it's good for us to be here, we can hear Peter say. He's just not a rabbi. See, that's the problem. He's just not a teacher. He's just not a prophet that people want to make him and that people want you to see Jesus the way they interpret him. But the Father wants you to see Jesus the way he knows that he is. And so be careful what you hear. Be careful what you pay attention to. Be careful who... You are gazing upon it, what you're seeing, and how you're interpreting things in your life because it'll determine a whole lot of things. Now, now again, remember, I'm getting to three points, and I just, just, just hold on. I know it's, it's hard to explain, but it is easy to understand as you open your spirit. So many of us, like Peter, when we come together in a place like this, we don't know what we're seeing a lot of times. Some of you who are brand new, thank you for coming if you're brand new today. Or if you're back for the second or third time and you're still getting used to it, you may not be interpreting what this mountain experience is. You, you may be seeing things, and I've heard people, I don't understand the flags. I don't, I don't understand the worship. I don't understand why people lift their hands. Well, that's okay because, listen, it's all contributing to the glory of God. I don't have to understand it. If you're, when your focus is him and not them, when your focus is him and not Moses, when your focus is him and not Elijah, when your focus is him, everything else becomes understandable. Everything else. The praise, the prayers, the warmth, the smiles, the announcements. Everything is interpreted through the glory of Jesus that we want to share with this community and share with you and share with your family and you share with others. Amen. See, you need not be distracted by the activity. And many people, I just, you know, I don't understand. It's too loud. It's too soft. I don't, you know, all, no, no, no. Your eyes are on the wrong thing. Your eyes are on the wrong thing. And so you need not be distracted when others are bringing their glory and their praise to Jesus. And so behold him today. And so they were overshadowed by this glory cloud. And the Father wanted to speak to them and he wants to speak to you. And I believe it is a prayer that we are to pray. I believe as God has, has revealed who his son is. He wants us to pray three things today, just three simple things, maybe many other things within those three things, but let me give you these three prayers to pray, to lift your eyes and behold the Lord of glory. Number one, transform my perspective of you, Lord. Transform my perspective of you. Lift my vision to heaven. You know what I do when I come here? I love to look at you. I love to, I love to see you. I, I love when I get to talk to you. I love all of those things. But let me, just t let me tell you this. When I'm coming in here, my eyes are on him. Amen. My eyes are on him. Peter, James, and John needed to see Jesus for who he really is. 
their insight and revelation of Jesus needed to be lifted above all else in their life. The Father knew their earthly vision and revelation of Jesus must be lifted to a heavenly vision and a revelation of him as well. This changes the game. This changes everything. It's not just about religion. It's just not about duty and, and uh, liturgy. It's just not about uh, what we think are important religiously. It's about revelation of him and experiencing who he is. And you can lift your eyes to see this. See, when you came here this morning or you attended this weekend's fire and glory meetings, let me ask you a question. And I've had asked myself this question. Lord, has my perspective been lifted higher in you? Have I, has my heart changed? Is it more humble? Is it, is it, is it more ready, God? Is it more willing Lord, is the deadness, is the dead parts of my heart being filled? Or is the empty parts of my heart being touched, God? <clears throat> Excuse me. Spending time with Jesus transforms these men in such a way that they would never be the same. They were willing to give their lives for Jesus, lay them down and die for him. That's big. That's huge. And so... If you leave here today without seeing him, <clears throat> not just hearing about him or watching others encounter him, remember Moses and Elijah, they're talking with Jesus. You know, other people encountering him. Uh, uh, then you've missed a transformational moment if you leave here uh, without encountering in that that hunger on the inside saying, Lord, transform my perspective of you and lift my vision to heaven when I worship you. Help me to get my eyes off of my problems altogether. I give them to you, but turn my heart to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse uh, 16 says this, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, that's you, that's me, when we just turn to the Lord, what does it mean to turn? It just means to turn and look, to turn and see. That's how simple it is. That's how simple he's made it. What does it say? The veil is taken away. The things that hid him are taken away. When our heart turns, the veil is taken away. Things that distracted us, things that caused us blurred vision. We didn't understand. We didn't, couldn't interpret. And it says now the spirit. Now the Spirit, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, everybody say we all. Look at your neighbor and say we all. <clears throat> we all with unveiled face now. The veil is taking, taken away. The things that hindered us from seeing him, there are no excuses in not seeing him in all of his glory because our spirit man is alive now because we are born again. We have believed in Jesus. He has washed us of, of our sins, cleansed us with his blood, put his Holy Spirit within us, and within us, made us sons and daughters. We all with unveiled face, beholding as in, as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Do you... Oh, I could go there. I can't. I got it. I got it. But listen, we are being transformed. Everybody say transformed. <clears throat> and just not transformed for transformed sake. But listen to this. Into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. I want to be like, I want to be more like him. I feel my humanity. This, this weekend as I'm pouring out my heart, fasting and my weakness and all of this, this fleshly stuff, I feel my humanity. And one minute I feel like, God, <clears throat> I have no power to do this. I can't, you know. And then the next minute the spirit breathes on me and I'm, I'm seeing and I'm, I'm encouraged and I'm feeling the glory of God. You see, turn your heart when one turns to the Lord, when your perspective turns, when, when your vision lifts to heaven. See him upon his throne. See him every day upon his throne. See him ruling and reigning. He's transforming your life when you do that. See, this morning, <clears throat> consider the prayer of your heart to be this, Lord, transform my perspective, Lord. 
and in the process transform my faith. See, Peter, James, and John, when they walked beside Jesus, they, they, they didn't have this, and so they needed this. But John later writes about the glory of Christ and what they saw. Listen to what he says in John, 1, uh, John 1, uh, verse 14. The Word became flesh, that is Jesus, and dwelt among us, and we beheld what? His glory. Hallelujah. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this is the revelation that Jesus has for you. Again, John writes in Revelation chapter 1, listen to the glory here. Listen to the glory. Listen to what the Father wants to lift your, your, your perspective to. Behold the Lord of glory. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the Spirit, John says, on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet, and it was saying, I am Alpha, the Alpha, and the Omega, the first and the last, and what you see write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus. Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, to Laodicea. Why? Because Jesus wants the church to see this. You know, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want you focused on the government. He doesn't want you focused on the external. He wants you focused on the kingdom and the king of kings. And listen to this. He says this, then I turn to see. Everybody say turn. That's all it takes. Then I turn to see. You can do that now. I turn to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. It, I'm sure it surprised him. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man clothed with a garment down. And that was a title of Jesus. He was fully God and fully man, the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. John is seeing this, and he's writing it, and he wants you to see it. He wants you to know whom you are serving. And his voice, as the sound of many waters, he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun, shining in its strength. <laughs> and when I saw him, I fell at his feet. Again, why did John want us to see this? Why did Jesus want us to see this? His perspective was changed it was, was it for John alone? Was it for him only? No. It was for you. And it is for me. See, Jesus is coming soon. He is coming again. And I want you to lift your eyes, not only to see him, but see the harvest and see the things that God wants you to see so that you can be about your father's business. So this morning, consider this number one. Consider a prayer from your heart. God, Will you transform my perspective of you and lift my vision to heaven? Transform my faith. Number two, transform my focus on you, Lord. Transform my focus and remove my distractions. See, my focus is my attention and my concentration. Remember I said it, it, you, you, it, it's intentional to be faithful. It's an intentional act every day of my life, and it, it's a part of me. It's in, it's in me, and it, I want it to be in you. But, but my focus can sometimes get off, and, and I can be distracted by things, important things, yes. And yes, you can continue to do the daily mundane things, uh, and, and Jesus wants us to do that. But our focus, our heart focus, always centered on Jesus. See, when... Let me say this. When you converse with someone, I mean, when you're like talking with someone, you know when you don't have their attention. 
And so what do you do when you know you don't have their attention? You, well, if it's your child, yeah. <laughs> I heard that. That was good. That was good. Many of us, many of us will just not say anything. Because their attention is someplace else. So perhaps in, in my life when I'm not hearing God, maybe I'm just not paying attention. My eyes aren't lifted. My focus is gone. And maybe today if you're not hearing Him or seeing Him, and experiencing more of Him like He desires you to experience Him. The way He wants you. He brings you up the mountain. He wants you to, the Father wants you to experience Him. Maybe it's because your, your focus, my focus is off. We're distracted. And this is what happened to Peter and James and John. This is what was going on. But maybe for you, it might be things that are weighing on your mind and they're legitimate things, no question. And they're things that do concern you, but are you giving them to Jesus? What's occupying your thoughts right now? I hope it's what I'm saying. But sometimes, you know, pastor can go on and on and on in my mind. No, I'm just teasing. I hope, I hope that's not the case. What's occupying your thoughts? What's the space between your ears, this this mind, this glorious mind that God has created you with to think, to comprehend, and to know and experience. You've been created in the image of God himself, and your inner man has been created in the image of God himself. Hallelujah. And so when you came here today and throughout this morning, he's been drawing you personally. He's been drawing your inner man. He's been asking you to behold his son. This glory cloud has come, the glory presence of God. What has quieted your mind today to say, hush, distracting thoughts. My focus is on Jesus. I will give him my full attention. It's intentional. When you come here, it's intentional. It's intentional. You have to want that. And sometimes when you feel weak, you just got to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus wants me to climb this mountain, Peter said. John said, I'm going to go with him. I'd rather hang out with the other guys, you know, down at the bottom of the mountain. You know, I want to just oh, take it easy, eat, eat a little bread, some fish and loaves, whatever. Just hang out. No, 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 you are here. You've come up the mountain to be with Jesus this morning. You know how many thousands of people have missed this experience today. You know how many thousands of people missed the upper room experience. Only 120 went there. So you are among the minority. But there's, there's so many, of course, who are experiencing God. In the year King Uzziah died, this was a king in the Old Testament the king of Judah, there was a young prophet named Isaiah. And this young prophet had just lost his, his focus. He had a great ministry, very respected. And we see the book of Isaiah, the grand book of Isaiah, chapter 66 chapters. It, it, it mirrors the 66 books of the Bible. Isaiah was the, was the great orator and the great prophet of the Old Testament. But this prophet in his humanity... Um, when King Uzziah died, was very concerned about his country, concerned about his city, his, his own future, the future of his people, the people of God. And like many of us, we can be confused about what's happening and interpreting things around us, disappointed, discouraged, and upset about things happening around us and things that are out of our control in our nation. And, and we can say and do a lot of different things, and our focus can be on the wrong thing. We can pay attention. We can see those things. We can pray about those things, right? And like, like Peter, James, and John, Isaiah needed to regain his focus on the Lord and notice this grand experience that 
Isaiah had. And see, we don't have to wait for grand experiences like this. We have the grand experience. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, and we can fellowship and enter within the veil anytime we ever want to. We come up this mountain with him. Look at this in Isaiah 6. Look at what, look at what God gave to Isaiah to refocus him for the rest of his ministry. Because remember, there's 66 books that Isaiah wrote, and this is chapter 6. This is at the beginning of his life, and he was so discouraged about the good king, King Uzziah, who died. It says in verse 1, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train, the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts it says, of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried, and the house filled with the glory presence, the smoke of God, the, the, the glory cloud. So I said in that experience, Isaiah, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in, a midst, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I tell you, repentance is a good thing. It's a needed thing. It's not always found in our heart. But when we lift our vision, when our focus is right, oh, the repentance flows and the cleansing comes. Listen to this. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Very, this, is like the, this is like the mountain of transfiguration. Also, I heard it, say, it says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am. Send me. And the Lord said, Go and tell this people. And you can read it for yourself. So behold him. And never take your vision off of him. Never, never let your focus, if it, if it varies at any moment, just refocus. Let your compass be always true north. Let it always be upward. Let it always be upon him. Behold him, and he will remove your fear of man. Re behold him, and he will remove your fear of loss. Behold him, and he will humble your heart and fill you, and he will speak to you, and he will send you. Behold him, and he will impart to you all he has created you to be for his glory. Your future, the future of this prophet, the future of Peter, James, and John, these great apostles were all transformed. He is transforming your life. You say, Pastor Reddy, I just don't feel it. He is. And he's doing it now. He's doing it through my words. If you'll receive what we're saying. Isaiah was no longer focused on the loss of a king, a good king. Because, you know, when, when transitions happen in government, you don't know, what, you know who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, what is going to happen. But the Lord says in all of this turmoil, look up and let your focus be me. So have you determined, have you determined to shed your distractions and look up and behold him and receive. Number three and finally, everybody say finally. Are you with me? All right, all right. I'm just pouring out my heart. This is the third prayer that, that you can pray. And these notes are on the back table. These notes are on our, on our app. So you can review them or you can go to our, our archives and listen again if you'd like. But number three, transform my awareness 
of who you are, Lord. Live through me. And so at this moment, I want our, our, our worship team to just quietly make your way on up, and I'm going to finish this point. And then we're going to pray. You, O oh Lord, at the center of my life. You at the center. This is the most important thing to me. And this is what I believe the Lord wants you to say to him, talk to him about. Your tangible, life-changing, abiding person. Jesus, Son of God, the Lord of glory, your presence in me. You are the one that I need the most, and you are the one that I want others to see and experience the most. And that is my prayer for you. And I tear up. Man, I'm just such a softy. I just, I get up here and I say, God, I want to just, I don't want to cry. But it's so true. This is this, the Lord knows my heart. And this world needs to see a people ablaze for God. See, this is what's happening in Asbury. This is what's happening in, in churches and in schools. People's hearts are coming alive. They're seeing Jesus. They're looking up. They're not looking at things. They're looking at him. They're not looking at religion. They're looking to him. Revival is breaking out. Why? Because there's life that is taking place in them. They're seeing things. They're seeing things about themselves, and, and they're just they're cleansing. The flame of God is cleansing. The blood of Jesus is cleansing them. I need to pause just for a moment before I close and ask you to pray. Have you beheld him today? Will you? Will you intentionally do it? I've said it. I know I'm going to say it again. Why? Because it transforms you. It changes you. It changes everything. It changes everything. Every circumstance changes every problem. It changes it in such a way as to make problems like they seem to be mountains, but then they become molehills. Valleys uh, seem to be impassable, but then they become a straight path because you're beholding him because that's what he does. Jesus said to his disciples, who, by the way, changed the world, these weak men, these weak men, women, 120. But to those who were with him in Caesarea Philippi, he said this, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? He's always asking those things. Why? Because it's transformation. He'll struggle with you. He'll walk with you. He'll help He'll encourage you, but this is where he's taking you to the mountain to see his glory. And when you come off the mountain, there's going to be, de you just read the story, demon-possessed people, sickness and disease, people around you confused, people angry at you, people upset at you. It's like, I've been on the mountain, Lord, I want to get back to the mountain. But the Lord has filled you with the glory. Why? To be a world changer. <laughs> Who do men say that I am? You know, some Elijah, some the prop, whatever. No, Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? Matthew 16 shares this with us. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi said, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So Peter piped up again. Peter, Peter, I tell you, I love Peter. I, he just had all kinds of answers, not always the right one. But this was the right one. Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, blessed increased are you. See? Increased are you. Increased, blessed, multiplied, fruitful in this revelation of who I am. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. 
has revealed this, this to you. And so if you have this revelation, it's the Father's work in you. It's his work in you. And he said this, and John Paul shared a little bit of the last night. It was so good. You've got to listen to that message. And both messages over the weekend, James Turner on Friday. Powerful. Powerful. He said, you are Peter. With this revelation, you are part of me now. And I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Because why? You have this revelation. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Do you know I'm going from this glory moment, this mountain of transfiguration... And I'm going to have a wonderful newcomer's luncheon and we're going to love one another and pray for one another. And I'm going to go from there and I'm going to travel up to Lebanon. Why? Because there is a woman named Valerie who is dying, the doctors say, of cancer. And she has five children. Five children. And the doctors have said, call hospice call hospice because we can do nothing else but let me tell you who can do something and who will do something it is Jesus the son of God who is our healer and Valerie's healer I want you to stand to your feet right now and as the church of the living God who have experienced the glory of God. And bring down those lights and let's lift up our eyes to him. So there's no distraction, but only Jesus among us. Will you pray with me? Will you pray with me for Valerie? Will you ask for her to be completely healed, to be completely resurrected, and the cancer to be extracted from her body? and the working of miracles, and a miracle happened. Come on, lift your hands right now. Play a little something. Come on, church, lift your voice. Ask God to touch Valerie. We're coming off the mountain now. We're walking with Jesus now. We're going to go into that room. Pray, church. Touch God. Thank you that you're touching God. Thank you that you're moving. powerful healing rooms you had some, a young young woman come in with cancer and just tell us what happened she came in and, and she was seven months pregnant and she said would you pray for me and I went okay she said I have stage four breast cancer that's all she told me and I said oh my Jesus I don't even know how to pray it's not even my words that matter it's only about your grace and mercy and I set up and I prayed. It was just a simple prayer. It wasn't real religious or anything. It was just a simple prayer. Jesus, have mercy. Anyway, long story short, I said, looked at her and I said, well, How far along are you? And she said, Seven months pregnant. And I said, If you should have, I said, Do you know if you're having a boy or girl? And she said, We don't know. And I said, If you should have a girl, you should call her Grace because it's all about God's grace and mercy. You don't hear people, they don't come back and tell you. But we were decorating for Christmas in the lobby and she walked into the doors and I, she looked up at me and she said, I was up on the upper railing there decorating and she said, do you remember me? And I said, no. Now Valerie, this is for you, girl. Girlfriend, this is, take your miracle today. She said, you prayed for me two years ago. And here's How long ago, how long ago? Two, Two years? Two years ago and she said, here's my little girl, Grace. Oh my goodness. And then she was having a, she had a little baby boy. But the thing of it was, here's it. 
Two months later, she saw me at Kroger. I had never seen her before, I mean, after we prayed. Two months later, she runs into me at Kroger's in the parking lot. She says, let me tell you the rest of my story. She said that doctors did not want to tell her. They had no hope for her. They said, girl, you were one who was not going to make it. But Jesus, he's our healer. He says, see the banner, the I am banner? That is a testimony. I am the God that heals you, Valerie. So we sent your word, God, and you sent your word and healed her in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer of agreement. Amen.